This is Twit. IBM surveyed uh, CEOs. 40% of, according to the CEOs, 40% of workers in the next three years will need new job training due to AI. Now, IBM was one of the early AI hype monsters with Watson, but uh, I and I don't know. Is that 40% of workers is a lot. Um, we're going to use AI, like and I think we're going to use it appropriately. We're going to use it to uh, transcribe uh, the podcasts and to create show notes that are you know yeah. valuable. And that's a real simple thing that AI can do quite well. A human could probably do it too, but we just we don't have the manpower to do that. It it really seems like um, the uh, story that AI companies want us to believe is firmly rooted in what Lee Vinsel calls crit hype, where they're fine with you criticizing them so long as you're criticizing them as though they were the most powerful, amazing <laughs> thing that ever was invented. Exactly. And the reason they're deserving of criticism is that they're going to exterminate the human race when the, you know, the predictive sentence machine wakes up, becomes sentient, and turns us all into paper clips. I love and, and that I, term, crit hype yeah, Lee Vinsel's great. You Love should get it. him on. Yes. He's, he's he's a very smart tech critic uh, at, um, oh, I forget what university he's at. But yeah, he's he's terrific. Uh, gosh, no, I can't remember. Um, and uh, Georgia Tech, that's the one. And um, and I think that like we've seen versions of this before. You know, as you, as you said, there was another hype bubble with IBM where the robots were going to come take all of our jobs. And the story we were all told then is that it was going to come and take all the truck drivers' jobs. Right. Uh, and it was the story went truck driver is the most common job in the Bureau of Labor Statistics. Uh, and truck driving uh, is easy to automate because you can give them a dedicated lane on the interstate and have them set a following distance and then they'll drive and then they'll drive. So there's a bunch of problems with this story. The first one is that that's just a train, right? <laughs> and like in the same way that rideshare weirdos just like reinvent the bus over and over again. Or oh, the it's like rideshare. Or the, yeah, it's like rideshare, but we'll come and pick up several people and then we'll drop them off and we'll have a central depot to make things more efficient. It's like, great, you invented the, the city bus. bus, but worse. Small bus. Thanks. Yeah, really small yeah. bus. <laughs> uh, the city bus driven by unlicensed person. Excellent. That's that's what this city needed. We built this city on unlicensed drivers. So um it, the, that was the first problem. The second problem is that the most common job in America is not long haul truck driver, right? Uh, the BLS statistic uh, it, the, or the category for uh, heavy goods vehicle operator incorporates everyone who drives a thing that's like a big commercial vehicle, right? That's the UPS drivers. It's the truck drivers. It's the, you know, other kinds of couriers and delivery vans, moving vans. So like, Automating a moving van does mm -mm. not put the important workers out of out of work, mm -mm. right? The hard part of the moving van is not the driving, yes. right? It's like the packing and the unpacking and the carrying, right? And like a UPS van that drives itself needs exactly the same number of skilled humans in the van because the UPS van does not have a catapult that fires packages through your window, right? Like it, there is a human who <laughs> Although, carries it to Hey, that's port. a good idea. I like that idea. <laughs> So you, <laughs> Finally, I'm so into this catapult right. thing. <laughs> and, and Rebecca lives like on a very high floor. I can really see the catapult coming in handy. Um, you run out of windows pretty fast, though. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's not it, like it is a like literally you've just eliminated zero jobs. Right. Right. With if you, even if you can get all, all the UPS vans to drive themselves, which you can't because a UPS van driving itself is nowhere near the same thing as a bunch of 16 wheelers with a dedicated lane on the interstate. Um, and so, you know, I, I think that doesn't mean that our bosses won't try and use that to discipline the workforce, to use as an excuse to yeah. cut our wages, to threaten us, to make us feel precarious. And I also think that our bosses have proved over and over again, indeed, since the Industrial Revolution, they are happy to replace skilled laborers who make good things with machines that make substandard things. And, you know, you, you don't have to look any farther than the, the um, progress of um, what happens when you call a company switchboard. Where it used to be that you spoke to a human who could try to solve your problem. And then you spoke to a human who was a subcontractor in the Pacific Rim who could only read out of a three ring binder and not solve your problem. And then they dispensed even with that person who was really just an abuse um, uh, sponge, right? There to absorb your anger and then you'd hang up in, in frustration. They replaced that person with an interactive voice response system whose only job is to get you to say 17, no, 17, no, 
17, no, 17, 17, <laughs> operator, representative, representative, <laughs> operator, right? Like our bosses would happily replace us with that robot yes. and have them write all of our movies from now on, right? Yes. Uh, and, and so workers should be worried about it, but we don't have to like stipulate to the claims of the tech firms themselves that they have designed the thing that's better at writing fiction than we are because you can give it a prompt that looks a lot like a bad studio executive note, like, you know, make me E.T., but make the hero a dog and set it in the 19th century and give me a steamy sex scene in the second act and a gunfight in the third act. And and like the, the robot will just do it and not even roll its eyes at you the way a writer would if, if you went and gave them that note. And, you know, it, it really just like it really you can see why they love it. Right. You can see why studio execs love it, because like they are the living embodiment of that joke where the writer and the executive are dying of thirst in the desert and and they come across an oasis and the writer drops to their knees and thanks the fates for rescuing them from from thirst and then looks up and the the studio executive is pissing in the oasis and the writer says what are you doing and the studio executive says don't worry i'm just making it better <laughs> right uh and and you know, like executives love the idea of replacing humans with robots that just take their bad ideas and turn them into scripts. Yeah. Um, it doesn't mean that they would get good scripts. Right. And and yep. like we know that and we know that because we know what it looks like when you hire scabs to write stri scripts during strikes and they're not good scripts. So, uh, you know, I, I think that that we sh we should be worried about it, but not for the reasons that. Sam Altman says we should yeah. be worried about it. By the way, this Lee Vinsel uh, article is great and he wrote it two years ago. Yeah, uh, no, it was super it was useful. prescient. He is a professor at Virginia Tech. And, yeah, Virginia uh, Tech. Yeah, uh, highly, highly recommend this for anybody. He uh, he refers to a historian, David C. Brock. He, he calls them not crit hype, but wish, wishful worries. Mm -hmm. Worrying about things that would be nice to have in contrast to the actual agonies of the present. And as an example, oh, yeah. he gives the uh, the article, hacked sex robots could murder people, security expert warns. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. If only, right? Uh, <laughs> I mean, it's, look, it's the entire like the entire long termist movement just embodies this. Right. Like, why should I be worried about starving people today when there are 10 to the 53 hypothetical angry virtual intelligences 10,000 years in the future? Yeah. Any utility I can deliver to them multiplied by 10 to the 53 is more utility than we would ever realize for the, you know, paltry 7 billion, 8 billion people alive today. Because like any number that you make up that you multiply by an even larger number that you make up can be a very large number indeed. And if that's your basis for prioritizing your concerns, there's always a reason not to deal with the stuff that matters. Mm -hmm. Tech Break is brought to you by ACI Learning. The training industry's completion rate is barely 30%. ACI Learning blows its competitors away with an over 80% completion rate. Twit listeners will receive at least 20% off or as much as 65% off an IT Pro Enterprise Solution Plan. The discount is based on the size of your team when you fill out the form. 